Hi, Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, the Executive Vice President, Chief Medical Officer, and co-founder of the nonprofit CLL Society here at ASH 2022. Hello, I'm John Seymour, a hematologist from Melbourne, Australia, at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in the Royal Melbourne Hospital. One of the prognostic factors that we've really relied on in the past is mutated versus unmutated IGHV or IGVH can be said either way, um, and that's been very predictive of who d would do well with chemotherapy or not do well with chemotherapy. But that's been turned on its head a little bit with targeted therapies. Can you explain how that's changing? And there was a lot at ASH, several papers that found these kind of almost paradoxical responses to what was the bad CLL was suddenly the good CLL. Not, yes. So we absolutely have to keep re-evaluating any of these prognostic factors in the setting of a new treatment. So there are, this is an interaction, it's a dance. So the biology of the disease, but then how does the treatment interact with that? So these things are not fixed um, through time, very importantly. So the mutated IGVH, and as you pointed out, this isn't talking about genes like P53 or Notch, where a mutation implies a bad thing. This is part of the normal cellular education of a CLL cell. So mutated IGVH CLL tends to be more slowly growing and uh, responds far better to chemotherapy and uh, more durably. And we've seen that with continuous therapies, so treatments that are begun and then continued um, until the disease becomes progressive, whether that's um, the venetoclax type treatment in the old way that it used to be used, or still current, the BTK inhibitors, the difference between mutated and unmutated has been dramatically reduced or eliminated. So where you're giving a continuous therapy, the, that distinction has largely been removed. Now then, and what's emerging here at, at this meeting is really the next step. And when you apply time-limited treatment. So with these targeted agents, venetoclax or abrutinib, you use them for a short period of time, achieve a deep remission and then stop. And then uh, ask the question of how long until the disease re-emerges. Now here we're seeing um, some differences. So with venetoclax and when used with an antibody, rituxan or gaziva or binutuzumab, we're seeing that the, let's call it the unfavorable or the unmutated um, CLL, it, the cells grow and double more quickly. So it, even though you get a similar remission, the other one, uh, the unmutated IGVH, pops its head up, regrows, typically um, sooner than the mutated. However, if you use a combination of the BTK inhibitors and venetoclax, again, that difference is diminished or, uh, or abrogated. So the gap between treatments is likely to be shorter for unmutated if you're using venetoclax with an antibody. What's not clear is in the long run, may that matter? So the potential for retreating with the same therapy again, because the disease growing back after you have finished a treatment is not the same as the disease growing back while you're receiving the treatment. So when it comes back after a time off drug, the potential to retreat with the same drug and regain control is a very real option. 
What's not yet clear is when all this washes up at the end of two or three rounds of treatment, will there still be a difference? My feeling is there probably will and that the unmutated CLL will re-emerge as being somewhat less favourable, but this is part of the whole process of re-evaluating. Some are then considering making choices saying, well, if, if I have a patient with unmutated IGVH, the choice to use venetoclax and a BTK inhibitor will probably leave, give them a longer gap in between treatments. Whereas if the disease is IGVH mutated, both approaches, either venetoclax and an antibody or venetoclax and a BTK inhibitor, will give very long gaps and so we can choose based on preference. Do you want all pills? Do you um, want something right. with IV? How might antibodies impact vaccine responses, etc.? Yeah, and it, as you say, it's very nuanced, it's very complicated, and it's also an evolving story, and we don't know what this means long term in terms of what new therapies and other things. Well, it, this is, we'll, we'll see where this goes, because this is, this is an important this will topic. Be, and, but, and what do they say in the media, a breaking story. Right. And it also tells us that, you know, just because we learned something doesn't mean that doesn't shift as we get another piece of knowledge, a new therapeutic tool. Dr. Seymour, thank you for taking kind of a complicated area with several trials and making it accessible and understandable to patients. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Nice to be with you.